Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today's video is going to be a stash or trash, which is where I go through products I have in my collection that I've tried before and I feel like I didn't really like them. I don't know if I want to keep them or maybe haven't tried or just need to remind myself to decide if I'm going to keep them or not. So these little sneak peek are some of the products that I used on my face today to come up with this look. I love how this turned out, but I am going to get rid of some products that I use. Surprise, surprise. So before we get into the video, if you're new, I hope you decide to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know when I upload. I do videos once a week. Sometimes I sneak in a second, but I do makeup reviews, lots of hauls, tutorials, wigs, nails, anything related to beauty with a little bit of fitness sprinkled in. So if you want to see how I got this look, it's so cute, right? Then stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, I am in the mood for some cleaning. So I thought today I would do another stash or trash. And y'all are probably asking what the difference is because I do shop my stash stash or trash so shop my stash is first impressions of stuff that i've had that i haven't used and then stash or trash is stuff that i have that i haven't used in a long time and i'm not even sure i want to keep it so this is going to be somewhat of a let's try this out and see if we're going to declutter it so starting off with a primer i have this smashbox vitamin glow primer it has vitamins b c and e I've had this probably for a couple of years. Um, <laughs> I honestly do not remember what I thought of it. And so that's why I wanted to try it today. Being that I feel like I do have textured skin, I do want something that is smoothing. And I don't think that this does this. I think I just got this because it was on sale. Not because any of the claims were really exciting. So we're just gonna try this out and see what it does. I don't feel like right now feeling anything. Like my skin feels plump. It's a hydrator. It says it's basically for a hydrated, healthy glow. I don't see a glow, so I don't know. We're gonna go ahead. I feel like I need something to, to, to do with these pores. I also have this Wet n Wild Coconut which I think, I feel like I remembered kind of, no. Okay, I thought this had some smoothing properties, but I don't feel like it does either. So we're just gonna be super hydrated today, which is fine because I'm using a matte, prime, uh, matte foundation. I think if I had to pick between which of these I would keep, I wanna keep the drugstore option because I don't have a lot of drugstore options. I do feel like this is a little more smoothing, to be honest. See, that's what makes these hard because I'm just like, you have space for it, go ahead and keep it. But at the end of the day, if you're not gonna use it, why are you keeping it? We're gonna do eyeshadow first. Since today is a play day and I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to use a palette I've been sitting on. This is the She Glam Cactus Cool Palette. I don't even know if you can get this anymore, but I have had this forever and I've been wanting to declutter it but I've never used it. So I'm just gonna grab a concealer and put that on my eyes for eyeshadow primer. But I feel like now is the time since I'm home today and nothing is going on for me to try this. So if it sucks, I can just get rid of it and be done with it and no harm, no foul versus actually using it when I need my makeup to look decent. So this is what the palette looks like. I am going to need to bring in some neutral colors to kind of help this tie in a little bit, like a bronzer for my transition shade. I bought this planning on doing a full face of She Glam to see if it was worth it. But then I started looking at all the stuff on the She Glam website. Y'all excuse this hair. I was not about to do like, I'm not, I wasn't spending all that money. I think at that time I had kind of gotten into a better place where I was like, stop just spending money on stuff because 
I'm just gonna go in with a bronzer in my crease. I always do this no matter what color look I'm doing just to help everything kind of tie together. And then we will see what happens from there. I'm gonna use this Rimmel London. This is so old and I'm probably gonna declutter it after today. I remember buying this and like traveling with it and it being the only thing that I used for a while because drugstore options, it was like the only face palette that actually had a bronzer deep enough for my skin tone that wasn't like a face powder or something like that. So I held on to this baby and I think I might even have a backup. But this highlighter shade, I remember being too icy. And then the blush, the blush is not bad. It actually reminds me of NARS Orgasm. I don't know if you can still get these. If you can, I honestly would probably buy it again just because I feel like it was a really good face palette. But if you can't, I know there are a lot more options now available. Thank goodness makeup has come a long way. So I'm gonna use the same brush and we're gonna start off with, let's see what this shade looks like right here. This is Pear Naked and just see if we can get any color payoff. I love me a good green eyeshadow and I think I just was like, yes, there are other shadows from She Glam that I could get, but I want something that is gonna be different to add some value to my collection. And needless to say, that was probably not the best route to go with this one in particular because it's not gonna get a, a lot of use. And I don't know if these, harsh, these eyeshadow shades are actually harder to make. So let's see but right now packing this on the color is actually staying pretty true so i like that we're gonna try to do another halo eye this is very powdery i feel like my last halo eye i did i really liked it we're gonna go with relationship status which is this shade up here it is a really dark green and then this one's even darker but I don't think I need that super dark one yet. Let's just see if this builds up. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like I remember swatching this and just being like, I am so not impressed that I don't even know if I wanna keep this. I just have so many other eyeshadow palettes, so it kind of feels like you're just holding on to this because you bought it and it's not, if I'm not gonna use it or don't enjoy even looking at it, like I have some palettes I haven't used and I literally open it and I get fuels and I haven't even used it yet. I'm keeping that because it evokes an emotion. But if I open it and I'm just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, then it is absolutely pointless. All right, so this is what we have so far. I do feel like I want to see. I'm going to go into that darker shade, Sweet Basil, and just see if it actually... Okay, it is a little bit darker. I feel like those shades are kind of similar, though, so... Yeah, I guess I see some darkness. Okay. So we'll just kind of play with that. That's the outline for it and I don't want this to get too big and crazy so I still got a lot of blending to do but now to figure out what I want to do with these inside shades because there's only three nice shimmers in here and one is super dark collared ID 1D I don't know Skrilla which is hard and then blue agave, these are the shades right here. So I'm trying to figure out which one of these, y'all know I'm leaning towards this one, but this shade is so pretty and it's actually the smoothest one. The other ones are like kind of chunky. I'm going to start off with blue agave. There's one other shade that's kind of like a satin, this one here, but I think it's too dark. So we're gonna start with Blue Agave. I don't even think this will pick up on a brush, but we can try. So we're gonna start with Blue Agave 
and just see if this even picks up. Now you see, here's the problem. <laughs> that is pretty. Now, you gotta ask yourself, with all the eyeshadow palettes I have, is this so great? I probably need to, you know what? Okay, tell me something. Here's what I've been struggling with. I'm about to also try to start filming, like putting my eyeshadow palettes together and organizing them. And I was thinking about doing them by color story because then that way I can see like, okay, these are all my greens. Do I need to keep this palette or can I get rid of it and use this other palette because it also has greens, but I really have been thinking I wanna do them by brand just so it's easy for me to see, you know, which ones are my favorites, which ones do I have the most of, which ones do, you know, what do I keep buying over and over? And I feel like if I looked at this palette with some other green palettes that I have, I might not feel as inclined to want to keep it, but just based on the fact that I probably paid $5 for this, like that's worth one of these eyeshadows being good. Now, if I could depot them, that would be different. But so far, just the pop I'm getting from that, I think that is so pretty. So we're gonna go into Skrilla. And again, spray my brush the other side. And let's put that one right in the center. This one is very chunky. It's pretty though. It almost is kind of giving it like a multi, I don't want to say multi-chrome, but just super foiled, shiny look. I think using this palette is going to make me go and look at all my other green palettes and feel, look at, to see if this is like, is there something in this palette that you have already? Because then you can get rid of this because there's nothing else. I'm getting a little bit of fallout that I feel like this palette has that I'm like, I need to keep it. These are so chunky. I don't like chunky. Mm -mm. I don't like chunky eyeshadows like this at all. Like I got a mess on my face. It's falling on my lashes. All right, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take this shade in a pickle right here and see if I can use that to kind of blend out around the edges some, just so it's not so harsh. But just based on the mess that I am getting on my face, I'm gonna declutter this palette. I'm just gonna do it because I know I have my pickle palette and I have, which I believe has shades very similar to this and maybe even some duochromes. Like this is cute. And if you want to try a green eyeshadow palette, I don't know, all this fallout, all this mess, like, mm -mm, that is not for me at all. Okay, so while I'm letting my primer dry again, I'm gonna do my eyebrows. I normally don't do these early. I save them for last, but I have an eyebrow gel from e.l.f. that I'm going to try. I don't, yeah, I've used this, but I don't remember how I felt about it. I don't feel like I remember it being like, one, I don't use eyebrow gels a lot. Two, I don't feel like I remember it being like, I don't remember it being bad. It's definitely better than the Tom Ford one I tried. Um, but... I just, I don't remember how it wore. And like, I wanna try to keep stuff in my collection that I can say, oh, I know I have this and it works well versus I have this and I have no idea how it works. I feel like I always talk about, to my friends anyway, how there are a lot of good drugstore options, but I tend to gravitate towards doing my makeup with high-end options just because I have them, why not use them? But I still want to be knowledgeable about what's available at the drugstore and if it's any good. I like how this is applying. It does feel kind of slippery. Like the ABH one I feel like is a little drier. 
I went ahead and did the other brow off camera just to save some time. I feel like every time I use a brow pomade kind of situation, my brows go crazy. So we'll clean these up a little bit, but I'm going to see how this looks when it dries down because I do kind of feel like that formula is not that bad. I'm going to color correct a little bit under my eyes. I have this Becca Smashbox collaboration. Y'all know they have their under eye corrector. I found this at a cosmetics company store. Why can't I open this? Yeah, I haven't even swatched this. Um, I found this at a cosmetics company store. And I remember this being like all the rave people talking about how great this was. And at one point they only had like one shade that was kind of too light for us. And then they deepened up the shades. So... I saw this and decided to get it. I either found it at the CCO or it was on sale at Ulta. Definitely did not pay full price for it, but I do feel like this shade is doing a really good job color correcting. I just don't know about the formula because it is very creamy. I am going to put concealer on top of this and powder, but I feel like that actually did a really good job with these under eye dark hollows here and then I'm going to do a little color correcting in my other areas I feel like when I do this it helps me use less makeup unless I'm still just doing full glam anyway but I also feel like sometimes when I don't color correct even though I have a full coverage product I still have to use a lot more to make the dark spots not show through gray so this just helps with coverage and everything being true to color foundation today I have the dose of colors meet your hue I don't even know if this is still available I think it is um but I remember I bought this online, Dose of Colors. I think they were having 50% off or something. I bought this years ago. I have the shade 129 Dark. My Becca Smashbox is in medium dark. Um, and I remember I got it and I feel like the shade was too light. And I don't even remember if I like the formula of it. So, yeah, this is way too light. We'll start off with one pump. I know it is matte. I'm just at a point where I feel like I'm not doing makeup on other people yet. And even if I was, I would rather get something that has like a palette, like the Makeup Forever um, HD palette that has all the different shades that you can mix and match to get someone's correct shade versus having a hundred plus. I do have a hundred plus bottles of conceal um foundation and they're all close to my skin tone so I would still end up having to mix them so if it's not a formula that I'm in love with why am I keeping it because I definitely ain't going to use it on nobody else but being that this is so light like I really don't see myself I haven't reached for it because I was just like this is not the right shade and y'all know I'm a purist I don't like having to mix my stuff to get what I need. But in terms of coverage, one pump, this is actually pretty good. It ain't enough to make me wanna go buy it in the right shade. I mean, y'all know I just like my foundation shade a little bit darker because then I can lighten it up with concealer and all my powder and all that versus starting off with it really light and then looking like Casper the Friendly Ghost if I don't have the right lighting on me. So that is another reason why I would rather go dark first because I don't want it to look ashy. For my regular concealer, this is also light, but I've never tried it. This is the Revolution Makeup Conceal and Define Full Coverage Conceal and Contour Yada Yada Blah Blah. This is in the shade C12. This is too light. But being that I've color corrected, I might be able to make it work. I remember I wanted to try this foundation when it came out. Couldn't find my shade. I kind of feel like I had the same issue with this concealer. So, I don't know. I really wanted to like Makeup Revolution stuff because I feel like they dupe 
a lot of high-end products. And I feel like this might have been their version of Shape Tape or something like that. But I just feel like if I struggle to find my shade, then I'm not... There's too many options out there that are good, that are affordable. Elf Camo Concealer, like one of my favorites. Um, L'Oreal also has good options in terms of full coverage. Their Infallible line. Yeah, this is just too light. So I'm going to get rid of this. Even if the coverage is good, like I'm not going to... I don't want to keep stuff I'm not using. Point blank, period. That is just where we are. This is my private collection. This is not... I do clients, so... I don't even know if this is good enough to use if I was doing makeup on people. I feel like if somebody's paying me to do their makeup, I need to be using really good products, not... Which there are some good drugstore options, don't get me wrong. But I feel like you're paying me to get your makeup done and I'm using like $5 concealer and $3 foundation and whatever. Like, And then I'm going to charge you however much. I just feel like that's not... I need to use good products. I don't know. Y'all tell me what you think about that. If you went to get your makeup done and you saw somebody had e.l.f. products and L'Oreal and Maybelline versus... I don't know, like Mac or not everybody's going to have Pat McGrath in their kit, but you know, just some of the nicer brands, if they didn't have that and they were just using cheaper drugstore stuff, would you feel like you were getting your money's worth? I'm going to go ahead and set this real quick before it creases. I have this Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Powder. I have this in the shade Honey and I remember Years ago, I tried this and I felt like it was patchy and this is also a bit dark. And so I got a lighter shade. But I feel like I remember I could not bake with this. And I was going to get rid of this, especially because I got the lighter shade. But I don't know why I keep wanting to give this a chance. And I don't know if it's because... I feel like today I can since this concealer is so light and if I can make it work I still have my banana one so I am still thinking about getting rid of this one I think I just remember realizing like this is not a powder that I can bake with but most of the time I bake so if that's not something I can do with a powder that I'm reaching for and it's finicky Again, with all the options there are, I don't want to fool with it. Do y'all use this powder? Comment and let me know if y'all use this. What do you think about it? Because I just remember being so disgusted. But I feel like, of course, right now, because I want to get rid of it, it's behaving. This is what happens. This is why I end up <laughs> holding on to stuff. I didn't set the rest of my face because... This, I am not sure I want to keep. And I remember this is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. I remember talking about this and then I was going to get rid of it. And then I held on to it because maybe I need a different brush. So I have this e.l.f. brush and I'm going to see how this does in terms of picking up the product. Because I remember just feeling like this is not picking up right. I don't feel like it's just too much work. But this brush is making it do what it do because i remember thinking like i don't like this putty bronzer it's very dry is the problem so if you want that's the thing so some of these cream bronzers putty bronzers etc have like a super wet formula and they get messy really quickly and i have found sometimes that i struggle with that so i really wanted to like this and now that i'm using this brush with it i feel like this is much better than what I was able to get when I tried to use it before. Yeah, this is way better with this brush. So now that I have found a way to apply this, I could actually see myself bringing this in the bathroom and using this on a day when I kind of want to have a little more sculpt, but still have a drier formula. I like the shade of this, like, this is why I need to do these videos because I promise you, I put this in the trash and then I was like, wait, maybe I need to try it with a different brush. And I think that's going to be the key to make me like this. So she's going to stay. 
See, now looking at the foundation, I don't feel like the shade is off. <laughs> this is why we need to do this. I'm going to go in with this Ulta Too Cheeky for lips and cheeks. This is in the shade Debut. It's a cream. And I think I was holding on to this because I wanted to do a full face of Ulta. Like I've done a full face of Sephora. And this is not doing anything. Is she dry? Try to warm her up. That's what the shade looks like. That is so pretty. I feel like just... <laughs> I'm probably not going to get rid of that. I'll just warm this up a little bit and see. Oh, yeah, that is pretty. No, we're not getting rid of her either. Especially with winter being right around the corner, like it's already cooler here. This is such a gorgeous shade for fall and winter. This would be gorgeous if you wanted a monochromatic berry look. I might use this on my lips. I don't know. I have something else I want to use, so we'll see. But that's staying. That is also staying. <laughs> All right. For highlighter, I have this Benefit What's, What's Up cream. I don't remember how I felt about this. So we're going to use this because this is also very old. And I feel like I have so many other concealers. Concealers. So many other highlighters that I really like that I don't recall. Because this one has that sponge on the end too. Let's just see. Oof. I don't know what this sponge is supposed to do. Is this doing anything? I'm trying not to mess up my makeup underneath. I do like the shade of this though. I really thought I was gonna be getting rid of stuff today. And now the way this is going, I don't feel like I am. Because that is really pretty. Yeah, I think I like this highlighter. I hope this is still for sale. Like, <laughs> That's also the other issue. I'm like, I have all this stuff and I keep thinking like, oh, I'm gonna film with it. And then I'm like, do you even have this? Can you buy this? Because you don't wanna film with stuff that people can't buy and then they wanna recreate your look and they can't. So also something else to keep in mind as a content creator who collects makeup. All right, we're gonna move into liner. I don't know if y'all remember these. These, this is the Benefit Their Real Push Up Liner. I remember I wanted to be excited about this and I also remember feeling like this formula was just so finicky, like I'm feeling right now and the applicator sucked like you can never get, you would twist this and it's supposed to be like a gel, but like you would twist it and it wouldn't come up right away. And then the next thing you know, it would just like slowly keep coming up and keep coming up. And the next thing you know, you were wasting product. And I don't know if this is just so old that it doesn't even want to work. Oh yeah. And now I've twisted it too much. So we just have an explosion of eyeliner there we go yeah but right now it's just a bunch of it like slowly just making a mess on my table I'm gonna get rid of this I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my bottom lash line and I'm just gonna take sweet basil which is the darkest shade Kind of do a halo-ish at the bottom as well, but using that liner has glitter all over my face. I'm not too happy about that. And I do want to use a different shade. I want to try out that, what's it called? Homegrown, which is the kind of satiny shade there. And use that in the middle. Which doesn't even look like a satin on my eye. Maybe I see a little bit. And then I'm just going to go back with a smaller. What am I looking for? Something to kind of smoke out my bottom lash line, but not be too. There we go. Kind of like a pencil brush. And we're going to go in. What haven't I used? 
let's try just one of these shades right here. They look very similar. I'll start off with the darker one, Sublime Lime. And just see if that helps to soften that up. This is really powdery. I want to put one of the lighter shades in the center just to help tie, but the way these are so freaking... Try to wet my brush and see if that helps. These are just so flaky that I feel like I'm going to go with Blue Agave. Try a little bit of Skrilla. Yeah, no, I'm getting glitter all over my face and in my eyeballs. Let's go ahead and do mascara. I have this Essence, the False Lash Mascara. Now I realize, I can tell, even when I have some, is this dried out? Even when I have makeup on, like if a mascara is going to work or not, this is dry, way too dry. It's trying to do something. Maybe my eyeliner coated parts of my lashes. I like a drier formula, so I don't have an issue with that, but I still need it to go on without having to put, there it goes, 50 coats. I feel like this is one I'm gonna have to try with no makeup because I can't really see. I do see some volume. I know it's probably too hard for y'all to see, but I see some volume. So I think I'm gonna pull this one out the drawer, bring it in the bathroom so I can use it on a normal day to see what it does when I don't have a lot of makeup on. But I tend to gravitate towards my tubing mascaras especially when I'm going to the gym so I don't have makeup all over my face. Although, to let y'all know, my Milani, I forgot the name. I can't believe I forgot the name. My Milani mascara, apparently if I strain really hard and my eyes start watering, even though it is tubing and supposed to stay put, will run all over my face. Had it happen and nobody told me I look like a raccoon after I was done deadlifting. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is getting on my face. Okay, this is gonna go in the trash. Cause it's just taking too much effort. All right, for lashes, I have these Glam Light Chocolate Taco Lashes. These are pretty big, but I think I'm gonna be able to get them on. I think, I know I'm gonna need to cut some, so I'm gonna do that first. And then using my Lash and Go has been working really well. So hopefully that will still be the case for this one. We're going to go in with my Velour Lash and Go and see if we can get this to work. Because I feel like I've been having really good luck with these. So I'm going to put two coats of this and then put the lash on and see if we can get it to stick. All right, say a prayer. Y'all know me in lashes, hit or miss. I probably should have just put them on. I feel like I always do off camera. These inner corners be getting me. Ooh, that's a big lash. It's pretty though. That is long, like I'm blinking and I feel it touching. Okay, that is stuck. That is stuck. This ain't stuck. That's a big lash. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other one on off camera and then we'll come back and do the lips. Okay, for lips, we are gonna go ahead and stay with the monochromatic look. So I am gonna use the Ulta Cheek and Lip combo, but I'm just gonna line my lips with something I know I like. This is the ABH liner in malt. I feel like it's really hard for me not to like a lip liner. Like if I don't like it, it's either because the shade is not good or the formula is really dry. Also, if I gotta sharpen it. So that one is one that you have to sharpen, but let me see if I can just put this on. Ooh. 
That is pretty. It feels very soft too. I am definitely keeping this. Y'all, look at this makeup look. This happens. I want more blush. This happens to me so often where I'm just like, mm, not going to like this. I'm going to get rid of this. And then it ends up coming together. And I'm like, nope, not getting rid of it. And that is exactly what happened today. So tell me what y'all think for this final look. It is a bit dramatic, but... That's kind of why I wanted to do it today, just in case it turned out bad. Let's recap real quick. These lashes are long for me. I was able to get them on. They're not bad. I like the length of them for a dramatic look, and I like that they have that kind of flair. I'm going to keep them, but would I buy them again? Probably not. So I'm just going to wear them today and if I get a couple more uses out of them that's fine but I would not buy these again they're just it's a lot for me a lot um the eyeshadow palette it's cute but I'm gonna get rid of it it is just I have greens and I feel like I'm still blinking away glitter in my eyeballs so I don't like that everything else this liner gonna go I'm gonna get rid of this wet and wild Primer. I wanted to keep it only because it was drugstore. That is not a good reason to keep something. There are other good drugstore options. I have some of them in my collection, so we're going to let that one go. This mascara, I'm going to try this. I said I was going to get rid of it, but I'm going to try it without heavy makeup to see how it looks just on my lashes before I get rid of it. And then I put everything else down here. I feel like I used more stuff than that, but this is it. I'm going to keep the rest of this stuff, so including this foundation. I do feel like it's a little light, so we'll see what happens with the rest of the day, but just how it looks on my face, I think my makeup looks so good. Everything else we're keeping, so comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like the look? I'm sure you're probably thinking I should keep the eyeshadow palette, but I promise you I have greens, but if you like this then you should go ahead and get it. That's part of the reason why I wanted to do this video. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and comment. Let me know your thoughts. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.